Shabbat Shalom, Parashat Vaitchanan, Chag Sameach. We are celebrating this Shabbat, the incredible day of Tu Be'av, the 15th day of Av. Where the Mishnah teaches us there were no happier days for the Jewish people, more than Yom Kippur and Tu Be'av. What an odd Mishnah. How do we couple these two days together? Perhaps we should first reflect on the nature of the Shparasha as Moshe Rabbeinu enters the second phase of his long monologue, starting it from a particular point in which he reflects back on his own personal desperate desire to enter the land of Israel. And he begs God over and over again, just let me enter the land. He begs so much in which God has to say to him, no long, no more. Do not speak to me any more about this matter. The matter has decided, been decided. You cannot enter this land. I'm not going to reflect upon the objective and the harshness of God's decision not to allow Moshe to enter, but rather on how the Midrash tries to depict the desperate desire that Moshe Rabbeinu had to enter the land, in which Moshe negotiates over and over again with God various types of solutions in which Moshe Rabbeinu says, God, if I cannot enter alive, then at least enter, allow me to enter dead. At least allow me to be buried in Israel. And this cannot be granted. So Moshe says, perhaps God, I can enter just for a moment and leave. That will not be granted either. Says Moshe Rabbeinu, God, at least allow me to enter the land as a bird. Let me become a bird and fly above the air of the land of Israel. And this too was not granted. All that was granted is Moshe Rabbeinu is accompanied together with God up to the mountains that have a beautiful view upon the entire land of Israel and Moshe is given vision to the present and to the future of the land of Israel and its people. The desire is what I would like us to reflect on. How deep was the love and desire that Moshe Rabbeinu had for the land of Israel, how deeply he just wanted to enter the land to experience its holiness. Oh, if only we could experience that desire for one little brief moment. How many of us truly have that experience? The Gemara relates to us how one of the great Talmudic scholars was coming down towards the land of Israel and reached the stones of Akko and fell down to the floor and kissed the stones. In fact, some of us have seen pictures of the rare Jew that comes into the land of Israel after so many years of being in exile and falls down off the steps of the plain to the tarmac and kisses the floor. For most of us, the mere thought of kissing the floor of the tarmac of a airport full of fuel and whatever other dirt may be on the floor is, is, is an absolute disgusting thought. Let's be honest. How many of us have the desire to kiss the stones of Israel? How many of us could understand the holiness that is in every grain of the land? We do not understand or appreciate the greatness of the land. And so Moshe Rabbeinu wants us at this very special day to reflect upon how close we really need to fa- feel for the land. It is beautiful that it intersects together with the day of Tuba'av because what is this celebration? Our sages tell us that after 40 years in the desert, the Jewish people all acted with tremendous kindness to one another. We often reflect on how did it occur that an entire generation died off during the 40 years? Did people just die arbitrarily whenever they happened to die? Or was there a particular system in which the generation was slowly removed? So does that tell us that in every single year, on the eve of Tisha B'Av, yes, the same exact day that we remember the destructions of our temple, The custom was that every single member of the Jewish people dug themselves a grave. And they went to sleep that night in their graves. And Moshe would wake up in the morning of Tisha B'Av and with tears walk amongst the people crying out, May the living separate themselves from the dead. 
And so every single year on Tisha B'Av, another big chunk of the people would not wake up in the morning. This was done as an act of tremendous kindness from one to the other in order to spare the Jewish people from the terrible burden of having to bury the dead. And so each and every person went to sleep in their own grave, not knowing if they would wake up in the morning. And so was done year after year for 38 years of this terrible journey through the desert. Until this final year, there were still approximately 1,700 more people that thought that they were supposed to die as well. But yet, in the morning of Tisha of that year when Moshe Rabbeinu got up and asked all the living to separate from the dead, everyone rose. The only natural conclusion, of course, was perhaps we messed up our calendar. Perhaps we're not counting right, and it's not Tisha B'Av tonight. So the next night they did the same. And once again, everyone rose. The next night they did the same again. And so they did for three more nights until they noticed that the moon has completed itself and the circle of the moon is full and they knew that in fact their count could not be off. And that morning when everyone woke up, they set this day as a great celebration. This is the day of Tuba'av. Many years later, after the tribe of Binyamin was nearly destroyed in a terrible civil war that occurred amongst our people, when the Jewish people decided to try to rehabilitate this tribe, after taking a vow during the heat of the battle that no one would allow their daughters to marry any children from this rebellious tribe, now that the remaining members of the tribe of Binyamin had repented and wanted to once again rehabilitate the tribe, they were stuck with a terrible problem. And they came up with a wonderful solution in which they asked the daughters of Shiloh, to go out and dance in the fields and called upon the men of Binyamin to stand in the boundaries of the fields and observe the women as they're dancing and select for themselves a bride and go and simply take her, promising that the fathers of these brides would not object and so allowing the tribe of Binyamin to rehabilitate itself without breaking the vow that the people have taken. From that year on, it was established as a beautiful custom that the daughters of Israel would go out all dressed in plain clothing, white plain garments in order not to embarrass those that do not have money for fancy dresses. And all the daughters of Israel would go out and dance in the fields. And the men of the Jewish people would stand and pick for themselves brides. And so the statement was said, Dear gentlemen, do not look at the external beauty. Do not look to the nature of the dance, but rather look at the deeper layers. Look into the inner beauty of these girls and pick for yourself a bride that is behooving you in order to build a loyal home in Israel. And so twice a year the custom has developed in which this dance took place. Once at Yom Kippur in the afternoon, and the other on Tu Be'av. It is difficult for us in our generation to conceive of such a custom on Yom Kippur that has become such a heavy and serene day. But indeed in the days when Beit Shemikdash would stand, after the Kohen Gadol would come out, and the red threads would turn into white, and atonement was achieved, the men of Israel would go out to, field, to the field to see the daughters of Israel dance. Because in our faith, the establishment of a home in Israel, the picking of a bride, the building of a new forged partnership with God is the highest act of a holiness that we could do. And this is how we move forward. We build a new home in Israel. We build a new faithful home on the land of Israel. And as we said in last, in two weeks ago, that power of clinging that is parallel between the land, our family life, and our relationship with God comes together on this very special Shabbat. Perhaps we need to pray that we should develop that same desire that Moshe Rabbeinu had. Perhaps that every time we step in this land we should feel the awesome excitement that is generated from the holiness of Israel. Perhaps 
we should use the passion that we have for one another in our own personal, private lives and allow it to mimic, to spread out and to shade and to cast a shadow upon our relationship with the land. And we should take that passion in our relationship with God and our relationship with this wonderful land. May this day of Tu B'Av be a source of great celebration for all of us as individuals and as a people. May the days of comfort begin as we start in this Shabbat reading the seven chapters in the prophets that are known as Zayn de Nechamta, the seven great prophecies in which we are comforted and promised a better destiny. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach.